Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to continue our series on how to use the Rhino Mock Isolation Framework. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how to utilize the Partial Mock feature within Rhino Mocks. This episode is recorded using Rhino Mocks 3.5. Future releases may do things a bit differently, so if you're using 3.6 and beyond, the syntax might be slightly different than what you see right now. Partial Mocks are useful for at least two reasons. They allow you to mock out part of a class and implement the other part, which will allow you to test various portions of a class while other portions are mocked out. It also allows you to very easily and simplify the testing of abstract classes. Without some sort of mocking framework, if you want to test an abstract class, you have to subclass that abstract class and then push pass-throughs to it in order to get to it. And that's just pretty painful and it's more work than it's really needed. So with the mocking framework, you can go ahead and simplify that. Now what we have here today is a very simple, very straightforward demo that has no real value. It's just something to prove the concepts. We have a concrete class here called do some, some cool stuff. And do, do, cool so, do some cool stuff has two methods. Some really cool method and some kind of cool method, but not really. Both of these are public. Uh, and what happens is when you call some really cool method, it actually calls into some kind of cool method. Well, what we want to do is actually mock out the call of this method here, because we don't want to worry about that dependency. We want to mock that out. We can see how we can do that within Rhino Mocks. So let's go ahead and start creating our unit test for this. We will call this test mocking partial classes. Now, if you've seen the other episodes or if you've used Rhino Mocks in the past, you've known that for the most part with 3.5, you want to use the AAA syntax, range act to serve. Well, fortunately, if you're going to use a partial mock, uh, as a 3.5, Rhino does not support that, so we need to use the record playback mechanism. In order to do that, let's go ahead and write some code here. We're going to create a new mocking repository. And I'm going to go ahead and set up my record playback areas, otherwise I'll forget to do them. To do this, I'm going to use a using statement. And I've created my record playback segments. Now this is similar to the range actor cert where I need to put all my ranging inside my record, all my acting within my playback. So it's not too much different, just a little bit more code, a little bit more noise in my unit test. So now that we have our mock repository, I want to create a partial mock. And when I create this partial mock, I want to do some, you know, mock out the do some cool stuff class. Now, one thing to pay attention when you're using a partial mock, you cannot use an interface here because interfaces have no implementation, so it can kind of defeat the purpose. Once I have my instance of my class uh, created, let's go ahead and stub this out, just like we would in normal syntax. So we're going to stub out some kind of cool method, but not really. And because right now in this test, I don't really care about the value that's going to be pushed in. I'm going to go ahead and just say if any, any kind of integer goes in there, let's go ahead and return a false. And now all I need to do is come down to my re, my playback segment, and I'm going to call into my class, and I'm going to call my non-mocked out method. Now I'll put a breakpoint here, and we can actually be able to run it. In fact, I'll put a breakpoint up here as well. So if all goes well, what should happen here is I should come down to this line when I step into this class and I try to step into this internal method, it should step over because a mock will be in its place. So that's F10 here. Huh, F10 throws an exception. Let's see what this exception gives us. Invalid call, last call has not been used. Make sure you call in a virtual. Ah, okay. So what we want to do here is we're trying to put a stub on this method that is not virtual. Well, we need to do that. We need to make sure it's virtual, otherwise you can't create it with a mock. Let's try this again. If I had F10 over this now, now I work just fine. So if I step into this, now I'm going to hit F11 here, and you'll notice I step right over this I didn't actually step into here. That tells me that it was mocked out, and I wasn't. I didn't need to worry about the execution of that code. 
So there you have it. You have, you know, in a few minutes we've taken a look at how to use a partial mock to mock out a particular method within a class. Now one of the other really cool features of partial mocks is the ability to mock out an abstract class. Now I have this other abstract class over here called some abstract class. It's got a single method on called do something abstracty. It takes in two integers and does some math on them and returns it back. Now I've already gone ahead and made this a virtual because well I want to be able to subclass it and I also want to be able to mock it. Now to create a mock on an abstract class, it's exactly the same way. So I've got to create instance my mock repository. I'm going to go mock repository dot partial mock. Now I'm going to do using mock repository dot playback. And then what I'm going to do is some abstract class do something abstract -y. We'll do three and three. Step into this, and it should uh, allow me to test my abstract method or abstract class without having to subclass it. So let's go ahead and do this and take a look. Now, if I come up and run this test. I hit F11, it returns me a zero. And F11 should have stepped into this, but it didn't. What was I missing? Okay, what I want to show you here is, even though I don't have anything in my record segment, I don't need to set up something, you still need to do an empty record. This is kind of hokey, but I want to explicitly point this out to you that if you don't put an empty record, you won't get the same results you're expecting. Well, see, now that I have my empty record, I can step into this and I can test my abstract class without any problem. So I just wanted to make sure that I highlighted that because I know every now and again when I go back to do a partial mock, which isn't always or often, I often forget this and I always have to remember why is my unit test not working? Why is the mock not stepping into my abstract class like I expected it to? So you've seen in a matter of five or six short minutes you, a way to utilize the postural mock feature of Rhino mocks to test uh, to to test abstract classes as well as to mock out given methods in a class while allowing other methods to be executed as expected. So I hope you learned something. Until next time.